Hi and welcome to this Zenworks video. In this video I want to talk about the new enhanced scaling of Zenworks 11 SP3. In Zenworks 11 SP3 we're now officially supporting 100,000 devices per zone and we're increasing the number of devices per server to 1 to 10,000 and from 1 to 3,000. The best practices guide will be updated to reflect this. Now of course depending on your hardware your database, those type of things, that 1 to 10,000 number may vary, um, but in our super lab tests we were able to uh, validate that we could in fact with reasonable hardware uh, get to uh, one primary server per 10,000. Uh, and we also recognize that when we had fewer servers there was less traffic on the database uh, which actually resulted in better performance. Now, as far as what changed, I'd like to share some of those details to help you understand how we got here. To support 100,000 devices in a zone, the first thing that we've done is provided support for Oracle Enterprise Edition. You'll notice during the install or upgrade process now that you're asked to specify the number of devices you want to manage, and then we're now providing you with some recommendations about what database to use, and how much memory and disk space to expect to use. With anything over 40,000 devices, we'll be recommending Oracle Enterprise. For those of you who are on Microsoft SQL um, and believe you'll go over that, we're also going to be providing a Microsoft SQL to Oracle Enterprise Edition migration utility that will help you to migrate from the SQL environment you have today to an Oracle environment that's certified for over or up to 100,000 devices. The main thing was in Oracle Enterprise we're able to use the table space partitioning capabilities built into Oracle Enterprise and so by doing that we've been able to improve our performance significantly. As far as the other changes we've made, we've done some things around thread tuning during the install and upgrade process. So we now detect the amount of memory in the system and based on the amount of memory we'll tune the Java heap size as well as the number of Tomcat threads both HTTP and HTTPS that are available. This allows more simultaneous connections to the same primary server. As we looked at things in the super lab we realized that the default number of 200 is much too low for an primary server that has 8 or 16 or 32 gig of memory so we're now tuning that appropriately. We've also made some additional changes in the the database in the NC component table we've actually broken that up into a number of different tables. Um, for those of you using that table in custom reports or in some kind of integration with like a service desk system or some other tool that needs to pull that data. We've created a view as well with the same name so that as you do the migration those third-party integrations you may have written will continue to function but the data has actually been broken down so it, each type of component now has its own table. Um, during the install this means the upgrade between this change and some of the primary key changes that we've made to improve performance uh, do take an a little bit longer. Um, we've had a number of customers test and our very large customers are seeing uh, in some cases as much as three to four hours to do the, the database upgrade. Um, in some of the uh, worst case scenario testing we've done um, it took a little longer than that. Um, so you should definitely as you're looking to, at upgrading from 11 SP2 or earlier to 11.3 make sure that you plan significant time there if you have a large database. We've also improved the multi-threading capabilities. So previously things like the inventory storer process, um, the patch loader process were single threaded. This meant that as inventory data came in it had to be stored serially um, or as patch results came in it had to be stored serially to improve the performance um, and take advantage of the full capabilities of those primary servers. Uh, we've now multi-threaded that. Those are things that can be tuned. Um, you'll want to look at the best practices guide to see how to monitor and decide 
when you want to tune those. Uh, we've defaulted them to reasonable defaults. Um, and so now it will take 10 or 5 or 10, depending on which type of store process we're talking about, and be able to do those in parallel. This gives you much better use of the database. Additionally, we actually did significantly improve super lab testing here at Novell. We changed our methodology to be much closer to how customers in the real world use the product and we were actually able to simulate up to about 102,000 nodes by using this new approach. So we were able to actually validate and certify all of the changes that we made and verify that we could in fact expect to support those 100,000 devices per zone. Finally, we've introduced inventory pruning, and as we introduced audit, we also introduced audit pruning. Inventory pruning can be done as part of the upgrade, and generally, if you've got a lot of old data, if you have a lot of history with Zenworks and you don't need all of that data for legal or policy purposes, during the upgrade installer, you'll be asked if you'd like to purge that data, um, and if so, you'll be given the option to specify how much data you'd like to keep. And then going forward, you can configure that to happen on a regular basis so that you don't accrue a lot of that data that you don't actually need. So let's take a look at how you configure inventory pruning so that as you get into these large zones, you don't keep that extra data. So if you go to the configuration tab under inventory, there is now a purge inventory history setting. And this is where you can control what to purge and when to purge it. So the what to purge, you can see here we can select from deleted products or components. These are things that we did an inventory on and then the user maybe removed them and now they're gone. Inventory history data, software application usage, so this is the usage tracking data. You'll want to make sure that each of the dates that you set here to clean this data up are okay with whatever compliance regulations you may have or policy internally that you may have. So I may decide that I want only the last 90 days of some of these things. And maybe I want all of my history, my usage tracking. And then I can specify when it is that I would like this thread to run through the database. You'll notice here you can specify a start time and then a duration for this to run. That way, if you have a lot of data, this can take a while. So you could say, I want to start at 10 p.m. I want to run for four hours. If it's not done, the purge process will stop until the next time that window opens up. You can also dedicate a server to running this. So with the new changes that we've made in Zenworks 11 SP3, we can now confidently say that with the appropriate database, which is Oracle Enterprise Edition, on properly sized hardware, that you can now support up to 100,000 devices per Zenworks zone. And with the changes around multi-threading and tuning of the thread pools and some of the other changes we've made there, we can now also confidently say that we can significantly decrease the number of primary servers required to support that. Again, I would encourage you to refer to the Zenworks 11 SP3 best practices guide to get more information about ways to monitor and tune your environment as you begin to scale it up. Thank you. This is Jason Blackett, the Zen Guru, signing off.